Glory to God. Have you ever asked yourself, how am I supposed to make my son this great? You know what? This Pastor Peter this morning bringing God's word to you and I'll be showing you how to make your son this great. Glory to God. This morning, I'll be sharing from First Peter, the book of First Peter chapter 4 verse 10 and 11. Hallelujah. It does read, as every man hath received the grace even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Glorious scriptures. Hallelujah. It's always a privilege to come to you, especially on Sunday mornings, to let you know how great it is to be in the presence of God. You know, Sundays are meant for church. Sundays are meant to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. And going through this scripture this morning, uh, I was really, really encouraged and I felt I should uh, be able to share the same with every one of you. You know, um, the Lord had made something complete for us as a a complete package for the new creation for those of us who are born again with the moment and time you receive jesus into your heart as your lord and savior the bible said you become a new creation you become a new creation all things pass away and behold all things become new you uh you actually were born into the family of god at that point at that time at that point god becomes your father and because god becomes your father then there's this longing within your heart to always attend family meetings <laughs> yes of course every one of us knows that it's it's really really uh, good to fraternize with your fellow brothers and sisters within your family to fraternize with your family members this is very good this is important god created you uh, and made you to live uh, to be a part of that family not by mistake so in the same vein we have a spiritual family and that's the body of christ and when we get born again we are supposed to have time to have family meetings where we begin to um have fellowship with our father and with the brethren this is important and this speaking particularly to as many of us who have the habit of like thinking oh i think i can pray alone at home i think i can you know study the word at home alone i, I think i can listen to uh, preachings on the internet yes i do internet videos and messages and but i always say to people don't take this for a substitute to attending church it's not it's not intended for that it's meant to complement it's meant to encourage you, but not to take the place of church meetings. There is something about being in the presence of God on Sundays, especially. There's something about having fellowship with your brothers and sisters. It encourages you. It ministers to you in such a special way that nothing else does. And God has not made a mistake for creating the local church. And over here in the scripture that we've just seen, Apostle Peter ministering by the uh, auction of the Spirit, encouraging every one of us as believers in verse 10 of uh uh first peter uh one uh first peter four sorry uh he read he he, he 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 wrote to the church to you and i who are um, part of the church actually he said as every man had received gift so it lets me know that every born again child of god has a gifting of the spirit yes every child of god every born again child of god we have a spiritual gift and he said, as every man has received gift, it will take note, you received it. I received it. We didn't, it's not by a special personal effort that we have these giftings. We received it. And because we received it, we should be accountable to the one who gave it to us as a gift. To the God who gave it to us. Jesus talked about the parable of the talent. 
uh, when a master gave talent to uh, some servants while he was traveling. And when he came back, he called them to give account of how they used those talents. So you and I, the moment and time we got born again, we have some giftings of the Spirit, especially when we receive the Holy Ghost. But we are not supposed to keep those talents like one of them did, dug the ground and put the talent under. But to use it, yes, because God is an investor. He's invested his talent in you. And he expects you to use it to bless his people. Take note, his people, not primarily yourself. You don't use the gift for yourself alone. But primarily God gives his gift to us in order that we be a blessing to the people. For instance, uh, the, the, the Lord has let me know that uh, he's giving me the grace to teach the world, to, to be able to minister the world. And I, since I started doing that, I know I am blessed by it. But then primarily, the, the, the object of this gift is to be a blessing to others, to the church of God. And I should do it right because I'm going to give an account of how I use the gift if I don't do it. Likewise, you, um, it may not always be teaching. So, Pastor, you're talking about preaching. I don't know how to preach. Oh, no, it may not always be preaching. It may not always be teaching. It may be um, ministry one way or the other, help. Uh, one way or the other, an advice, one way or the other. Maybe God has given you uh, the, the spirit of wisdom, of knowledge. You are supposed to use that to bless God's people. And you don't do that when you are seated in your room. You don't do that when you are seated in your, uh, sleeping in your bed on Sunday. You do that when you go to the house of God. When you are fraternized with other believers. Yes, you say, oh, I thought it's only pastor that ministers in church. Yes, pastor may teach the word from the pulpit, but you as a fellow believer, you could be an encouragement to a brother or a sister by your side. Exactly. And that's what this scripture is saying. He said, even so minister, he said, as every man had received uh, the gift, even so minister same one to another, one to another, one to another as good stewards of the manifold. Uh, that word manifold in the King James is, uh, is actually, it does means many-sided grace of God. The, as the many-sided grace of God. So the grace of God is many-sided, which means there are different dimensions to the grace of God. Hallelujah. The grace of God upon a pastor to teach the word is different from the grace of God upon a brother or a sister, maybe to minister the word in, in, in form of help to a brother, in form of an advice to a brother, in form of uh, in one dimension or the other because there are different dimensions. Here in verse 11, he, be, he began to let us know more. He said, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle, as the oracle of God. So, which means there are some that are gifted with the abilities to speak words that will change and transform life. And they are not supposed to do it inside their room, but they ought to get in the uh, uh, in the midst of other believers in the church and speak so that God will use them as an oracle to bring divine secrets to others. Hallelujah. He said, if any man minister, to minister means to help. To minister, it means to help, to, to be, to meet the needs of others. Yes, to, to bring solutions to the needs of others. So if any man minister, let him do it as uh, of the ability which God gives it. Hallelujah. So which means it is God that gives us the ability. But we, we don't use those abilities when we are seated in the house, when we are sleeping in our bed. We use those abilities to bless others and then, then also we are blessed in return as we do the job. Hallelujah. He said that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Wow. Did I just see that? So God is glorified when I put the giftings of the spirit into operation. When I use the gift of God in my life to bless others, God is glorified because they will in turn give glory to God. So the big question is, so when I refuse to go use that gift that God has given me to bless others, do you know what that means? It means I'm withholding the glory to God. It means I'm, I'm, stopping, I, I'm stopping the glory from going to God. It means I'm not giving room for others to glorify God. And you know what? That's what God will judge us about when we don't do that, when we withhold the glory for him, from him. But you know what? As a child of God, we don't want to do that. Amen. We don't want to do that. He said, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. This referring to Jesus now. When people give glory to him based on the fact that we use the giftings of god in our lives then to him will be all the praise and dominion forever and ever so i want to admonish you this morning 
the 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 the, the secret to operating in dimensions of power and to seeing the miraculous working in your life and through you to others is by being in the presence of God, having fellowship with God and having fellowship with others. Yes. So I want you to ensure this morning, it's Sunday morning, rise up on your feet, get set for church, you know, take your bath, ensure to be in the house of God today because great things are spoken of you. Mighty things are prepared for you. And just like you'll be ministering to others, the Lord has also prepared and positioned others who will be ministering graces, the many-sided graces of God to you. Those issues you think you face, the solution is in the church of God. It's in the church, uh, what is, yes, because God has prepared other believers who will minister help to you, who will minister to those needs that you think are insurmountable. Those things that you, those, those things, issues, the problems you think has no solutions. God has positioned men and women, your brethren in church, who will minister solutions to you. So don't miss it. Don't miss it because you are going for solutions. God bless you. For you is not born again. Wow. This, uh, this actually like you are being left out but not not in indeed because you can you can get into this family you can get into this family so oh, pastor how am i supposed to do that you can confess the lordship of jesus christ today and be a part of this family how am i supposed to do that pastor the scripture tells us in acts of the apostles 2 21 say whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and in romans 10 verse 8 to 10 he said with the heart man believe but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you want to declare the lordship of jesus christ over your life right now you say father in the name of jesus yes repeat after me i come to you just as i am a sinner i've heard your word but i see from the scriptures that you sent Jesus Christ as the perfect Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world and therefore took away my sins. Today, I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life and I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Today, I declare I am born again according to scriptures. And if you made that prayer from the depth of your heart, you are born again. Welcome to the family of God. Look out for a Bible-believing church in the city where you live. Join that church so that you'll be groomed up and trained in the things of God. I want to admonish you to ensure especially today to go to church if you live anywhere around padova in italy i want to invite you especially to be our guest at healing grace christian assembly via j avanzo number 17 if you live in any of the adjoining cities like treviso vicenza ferrara rovigo uh, um, bologna venice mestre you are as well invited co to come around and as soon as you come out from the part of our train station in the Achella direction um you find a building before you where you have the policia locale the same building we are right there number 17 just climb um in go into the yellow door post and climb to the first floor and you find us there by 10 o'clock in the morning we have our sunday schools and by 11 o'clock we start in the main service on tuesdays we have our prayer meetings by 6 to 8 p.m. 6.30 rather to 8 p.m. So we'll be expecting you with open hands. Yes, with open hands. Do something good this morning. Ensure to help your brothers and sisters and friends start a great Sunday by sharing this message with them. There's too much bad news in circulation. You want to share good news. Yeah. So share this good news with them to help inspire their faith this morning. Exactly. And if you've not yet subscribed on our YouTube channel, ensure to do so. The name is Peter Shazob on YouTube. Ensure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we uh, post new videos or audio um, formats of our messages, you will be one of the first to receive it. Yes. God bless you. And I want to wish you have a great Sunday. God bless you. <laughs>